How are we going, everyone? Well, I'm going to bite the bullet and give it a go. What I'm doing here is preparing the garden bed, loosening it up. See, I'm just loosening, I'm not actually turning it over, just breaking the crust over, that's all. Just forking it through, maybe a little twist to loosen up the soil, get a little bit of air in there, and then we're going to top dress it. And what I mean by buying the bullet and getting on with it is I'm going to plant my first of my tomato batch or patch that I'm going to stick in here. So here I'm going to put three tomatoes, the big malakas obviously, they're going in here under the netting to protect them. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So this is where I planted last year's crop, had a wonderful success. They need about 60 centimetres around them. Look, I've seen people planting 20 centimetres apart. I don't know how the hell you get in there to look after them, but you've got to be there literally almost every minute of the day to train your tomatoes and control the growth on them. And obviously only one or two litres going up. Here, these wires have got to be retentioned. What I do is actually hang a string down to the base of each tomato plant and train it up. Now, it's not just the one litre that I like to train, it'll be two or three or maybe four litres. So I don't prune it back too hard, uh, meaning I don't just have the one because it'll travel four, four metres, I won't say six metres, up to three or four metres it will travel if it's only the one shoot. Because it's a vine, it grows like a vine, and you treat it like a vine, and then you can train each vine or each runner individually, because each one will produce a few fruit for you. There's a mosquito hanging around me, I can see it there. <laughs> anyway. So here, what I'm going to do later on, we'll see that as we progress, but for now, let's start with the ground, because that's the most important part here. Last year, I composted this, I put all our wonderful stuff, and this year, I'm doing exactly the same. I'm not turning it over, that's it. This has been walked in a little bit, because I've had to weed it earlier on, and, you know, about a couple of weeks earlier, but never turned over, so it's resting. And why we do that is that we want the microbes to stay intact. We want the colony to be working, the mycelium to be there, in, in, in connection. And all we want to do is plant our tomatoes into here afterwards, along with all the goodies on top. Of them. That's our cocoa pith, our black grid, our planting mix. That's what I'm putting in here. This has got compost already. This had compost from last time. I'm not topping it up anymore. I don't need it to get any higher. By the way, have a look at the potatoes. Eh? The spuds are starting to grow. You can see a couple of footprints in there. They're pretty big footprints. They look like Vader's footprints. You know why? Because the bloody rabbits are getting in here. I haven't finished fencing this area off here. And all that side's rabbit proof, but not that in there. And they've worked it out and all the little babies are out. They are delicious. Aren't they, Vader? Where is he? There he is. <laughs> Done this a million times, folks. I'm going to start with a little bit of superfood over the top. It's a couple of handfuls per square metre, maybe four handfuls. And just, it's like you're flowering the bench top, if that's the easiest way to explain it, to describe it like that there. It's about 70 grams, if I'm not mistaken, per square metre that you put on. And you know, if you've got big hands, you get a little bit more. That's it there. Next, my black grid. Now this has been in the rain, folks. I left it out there, got a little bit wet, so people can understand it. It doesn't dissolve. It actually gets digested with the microbes once it hits the organic matter on the ground. So they break it down and turn it into you know, a palatable, palatable fertilizer and it actually balances the release of nutrients to your plants. So your plants will never burn. They should not burn. It will help them hold their flowers and produce beautiful fruit, and especially for your tomatoes. We're gonna do the big tomato competition. I wanna win it this year. I haven't won it for two years in a row. Now on top of that, we're gonna add a fine layer of cocoa pith. It's sort of the lasagna levels, folks, that's what we're doing here, of composting. I've done this a million times for you guys, I know that, but for those who missed out on the last little segments that we've done on this, here we go again. Now this is a great water retention medium, it holds the nutrients as well, and it keeps its porosity so your plants don't they don't suffer, they don't drown, they don't have that compaction rate going on there. So it's a great medium to put into your compost bin as well, as well as into your planting mix. That's your garden bed or even pots. You can either use the garden tools, folks, or as I consider it, my fingers are the garden tool rake. That's it there. Now on top of the uh, cocoa fibre or cocoa pith is our planting mix. So you can see the rice hull, this one's a dry mix here. It hasn't been caught up in the rain or hasn't been blended with a little bit of moisture in it, which is good. So that's what you get in it. You get the rice hull, which is also another holding medium and it helps keep the porosity in the planting mix. 
Now this has got charcoal, it's got black grit, it's got superfood. Yeah, I've doubled up on it at the base, but I'm feeding the earth below, the microbes below. And now I've got my nice blend on top. So it's got manure, it's got worm castings, it's got compost. What else has it got? Cocoa as well. So you can never get enough of the good stuff in your garden. That's what I reckon. Two, about there, three for now. And as we develop the rest of the garden bed, we'll keep adding more tomatoes. We're going to go for at least 10, 15 metres there, folks. Now, I've got this one here. This is from my good friend, Marianthe. She's grown some. And I've kept that in our little hothouse. So for those who've bought our big malacas and they've only been this big, this is what it'll turn out to be, folks. Exactly the same pot. Look, it says Sol V Vasily. I bought this one. <laughs> so this is from our 2.5 kilo tomato, the seed, and a lot of you would have got for some of these ones as well. These ones here are about a 1.3, 1.9 kilo tomato. They're the seeds that I collected from mine. Obviously a little bit smaller, so younger plants. So we're going to keep the little plastic spoon so we know which one's which. That's going to go there. We're going to plant those there. Let me get my little trowel. So when it comes to planting tomatoes, folks, there's a million and one ways to do it. You can either just take it out like this. Oh, look at how healthy that is, eh? That's a delicious root system. That's super white, super clean, disease-free. That's what you want to see. If they start yellowing off, folks, no good. But it doesn't mean it's the end of the world either. So, loosening up the soil. So you can, I've got some of the bottom mix coming up at the top, so there's a little bit of a blend going on. That's super soft. That's super soft. Now, you can plant them the same depth as this. You can plant them up to here. Vertically, you can lay them on a slight horizontal plane like this and do the same thing. What I'm going to do is plant them to its normal depth, like they're just a little bit lower, right, for now. And let it just settle down in there, like that. And then on top, I'm just going to put these pots that I did initially for the plants as a sleeve over the top like that. Push it in a little bit, it doesn't want to just stay on the surface. That's it there. Now, what's going to happen here you can do this too, folks. Well, we're going to train this up there, and obviously we're going to get multiple leaders. But what we're going to do here, as it gets taller, we're going to remove those leaves around the soil level of the pot, and then we're going to top it up with some cocoa pith and some planting mix. Yes, folks, I haven't said anything about the climate yet. Well, not in this case here, but I have spoken about it leading up to this day. It's been too cold, and we always talk about Cup Day, Melbourne Cup Day. For those who are watching us from any other, any other part of the world, it's normally at the end of uh, October, beginning of November, where everybody plants their tomatoes. For us here, it has been too cold. It's 11 degrees at the moment. The soil isn't quite that either. Um, well, I reckon it is, actually. I reckon it's sitting about 11 degrees. It's a little bit warm underneath there. These are going to ch be challenged out there in the cold weather, but this will act as a little mini protection or a little igloo. It hasn't got it over the top, but we have got the bird netting over the top, which is what we're going to rely on, stopping any frosty nights coming through, and I doubt we're going to have any more of those. Lots of rain coming ahead, folks. You can see this is mounded up, so it should drain well, really well for us. So let's put Marianthes. We're using the orange one, so we recognise which one is hers and which one's mine. See what I'm doing here? I'm actually digging the hole, but I'm not pulling it out and dumping it there. I'm leaving it in there, so it's getting a bit of a blend going on. Now, you know how we speak about no dig garden? Well, you're going to have to dig something somewhere. How are you going to get your plants in the ground otherwise? But what happens is that once you disturb it, that little colony that's been established, nice healthy roots, less soil in this one than ours, but they're more established, as you can tell, it's a bigger plant. So what happens there with the colony, it starts to re-establish almost immediately, and if you've got your plant in there, well, it starts to network straight away. But the point here is, it's not disturbing the entire area, only the area where you're planting, the, the, the actual, what do you call it, the uh, rhizosphere area, that's the word they use, very technical word for Vasily, isn't it? That's where all the colony goes on, and that's where all the networking is happening, and you want to have that, yeah, well, that gets disturbed, but you don't want the surrounding areas to be disturbed. Now, let's feed this in here carefully. And I'm referring to microbes when I say surrounding areas. All right, bit early, but what the heck. I've put out my best plants first. Actually, I've got another 10 or 12 in there. They're all gonna come out, but intermediately planted. So in the next few days, we'll monitor the weather. If it's good, we'll monitor these. If they do, they're doing well, they're holding ground, well, we'll continue planting all the way along on both sides. And I am gonna actually add some more topsoil here, or planting mix, as I should call it, because that's what it is, it's not topsoil. I'm gonna fill all this area up and underplant it as well with something, I don't know, spring onions, maybe a couple of capsicums in between, not too close, not too crowded, so they can have enough room there. What's going on? The sheep. That's all it is, a noise in the background. 
So we're going to plant out the best, the, the bottom part here as well. And we have a nice pathway running down the middle here, folks. The only thing is we can't get out here because once these spuds grow big enough, it's done. Good on you, Vader. Which sheep is that, mate? <laughs> it's not. It's a cow leg or something. I don't know what it is. He loves his bones. Folks, check out our website, thesilliesgarden.com. Our 20% off special uh, our coupon code expires at midnight. That's the coupon code word to get a 20% discount on the existing discounted price. Thesilliesgarden.com, everything you need every day. From me, Vasily, Maresi.